Uh, this is a video for anybody who is wondering um, how to use their multimeter, specifically with the people that are in my um, electrical engineering classes at the moment. You might want to reference this if you don't know how to use your multimeter. So every multimeter, you have the unit itself and your probes. Um, I carry some extra stuff. I have a thermocouple. Uh, thermocouple will sense temperatures. Um, so this basically just converts um, the, it will uh, have a very, very small voltage and the multimeter will take that voltage and will take that voltage and read out a temperature. It'll do some math and figure out the temperature. I also carry some clips, although a lot of multimeters won't come with these, but these will go on the end of the probes and then you can clip onto things like wires. Uh, rather than trying to just kind of hold the probes, it's a lot easier. And, and if you're working with something like high voltage, you don't really want to touch the probes to that for very long. You don't want to touch them to it at all. So that's where these are helpful. So multimeters are going to be all very similar. There's this middle jack on mine called COM. Everything is going to say COM. This is called the common jack. Our black lead goes into the multimeter and the common jack. Our red lead, in this case, we're going to, we want to measure voltage and all of the other functions on this multimeter. So we go into the, this jack, which they're always labeled and mine is labeled with everything except for current. Actually on mine, it will do um, uh, milliamps and um, microamps on this jack. Um, and it will do current on this jack. So you would only use this jack unless you want, if you want to do current. So. Now let's do the basic functions. Get that to focus. Okay. We have, right now it's off. We're going to go to voltage. Remember, voltage is always going to be represented by a V. Okay, on mine, you can see the little squiggly line. That means AC. Um, on uh, other models, um, mine, the AC, and the DC voltage are on the same function on the dial, and then I just hit the function function button to go between A, uh, AC and DC. But on some, your voltages might be, your voltage, um, AC and uh, DC voltage might be separate. Um, so let me quickly draw for you what DC voltage symbol looks like. These are your two different v DC symbols that you're going to see. And this is like the universal symbol for DC, pretty much. So um, either one of these. So either a straight line with dots, with three dots on the bottom, or a straight line with three dashed lines on the bottom. Uh, same thing represents DC. That's like the universal symbol for DC. The multimeter is pretty much always going to tell you what range, what, what it's doing. So right now we can see that it says DC. Um, this is an auto ranging multimeter. A um, manually ranging one would mean that you would have to select what voltage you want to be in, what range you want. This, since this is auto ranging, it does that for me. Although we can select manual range with this button right here. Um, we can cycle through the different ranges. So we can go back to the millivolt range and we're just picking up, you know, voltages. Um, Remember that there's static electricity in the air and EM waves and all this other stuff. So we are going to read some millivolts. There is a little bit of noise on the signal. That's normal. Um, and then if I short it out, we get zero, which is what should happen. Now, if we see this negative, this, the, this negative symbol, it means that we have a negative voltage for DC, which... Um, usually means that you do not, you want to make sure that you reverse your probes. So whatever your, so that means that your probes are connected backwards um, in when you're measuring it. So if you want to hook up to something, then you're probably going to want to slip, flip where your probes are and then mark the other side, mark your positive or, and your negative so that you know before you connect it. This will also do AC um, uh, on mine. The auto ranging does not go down. Um, the auto ranging does not go to millivolts on AC, but I can. Uh, there is a millivolt manual range on this meter. My next mode is temperature. 
So I either get Fahrenheit or Celsius, we take our thermal couple, and it would go into common and the other side. Mine just connects like that. Most of them do if they come with that. Our next mode, unless you have a super cheap multimeter, that is. Um, our next mode. Uh, right now we are in resistance. So I will put that down and I will touch both the probes. We are now reading my body resistance. This is the, this is the resistance of my fingertips going across my body, um, which is pretty high. In the order, the so we can see that the right now OL is stands for overload, which means that the resistance is, would be just too high for it to measure. It's too high. But if I grab it like that, then we start reading. You can see that we have an M next to the ohm symbol there. This this symbol is omega or ohms. Um, or, yeah, omega, which indicates ohms. The M next to it means mega or million. So we have, you know, or it uh, depends on where I touch it on my on my skin. Some are some places are more resistive than others. There you can see we have two point, and it never stays still on your body. But we have two point five nine something megaohms. If I wanted to actually measure, be more accurate. It, when you're measuring resistance, it's much it's much better to just put the clips on because that will give you a much more accurate reading than just touching it to whatever you're trying to measure. So let's do that now. And we will measure this resistor. See what it reads. Now you see that it is doing its auto ranging check and, and now it's got it, 1.95K ohms. So close to 2K, but probably not. This is probably a very precision resistor, so it probably is 1.95K. Um, depending on the type of resistor, you'll get um, a different tolerance. Um, this is probably fairly high tolerance, meaning that it's pretty accurate what's marked on it. The next mode we have is diode check. So this means this... Uh, let me find a diode. I have some shot key diodes here. We will plug our probes in. Uh, these are shock key rectifier diodes, if I believe right, yeah. I don't know, I don't remember. But this is going to tell us the forward voltage of the diode. This is the voltage across, uh, drop across your diode. So we have half a volt there. So if you put a voltage across the, uh, if you put current through this, that means that you're going to lose half a volt. Um, what should, some cases is a big deal, sometimes it isn't. Um, uh, generally, we have diode, some diodes have a fairly high voltage drop, and then we have ones that are designed for an extremely low voltage drop. This is a fairly high one, although there is much higher. You could have a couple volts of a voltage drop. Um, you can also test LEDs. Um, it depends on your multimeter. Mine is a little bit weird, and it uses 1.5 volts for resistance and diode check. So that means that we only get... Um, that uh, we can't, it won't light up the LED. It needs three volts to light up the LED most of the time. Um, unless we've got a fairly low uh, low forward, forward voltage, like a red one. It might light up a red one, but probably not. Um, so it either uses three or 1.5. My unit uses 1.5 for some reason. It's okay, it doesn't really matter. Um, because as long as I see the voltage drop, I know that the LED is still good. Um, yeah, one, um, but uh, three is going to be better than 1.5 in most cases anyway, because you can get a little bit more accurate resistance because um, higher voltage means that it will probably be easier for the multimeter to calculate or you to calculate manually. Our last function on this particular notch is continuity. You can see that mine is fairly good. When I go like this, very, very fast. You can hear it beep. Um, a delay is not always great because it, what if you're looking at a chipset? You got your probe on one spot. You can run your you can run your probe across super fast and be able to get your you you can run your probe across super fast and figure out where things are connected. But if you have a voltmeter with a slow reaction time on the continuity, that's not going to work, and you're going to have to be much more careful. 
that's something to keep in mind when you're getting a multimeter. It, you know, if you can look at it in the store, that's probably a good thing to look at. Now we're in microamps. The thing that's different about microamps, so microamps, um, most of the time you're not going to. Um, microamps, unless you're measuring something that's extremely low power, um, like maybe a microcontroller or something like that, then you might, um, then uh, you'll use microamps. But most of the time, microamps are going to be just totally overloaded on here. And we're going to be reading in the measure of milliamps or amps. So milliamps, we have the milliamps function. On my multimeter, we have, I, I can leave it in this spot and I can measure milliamps. On another meter, you will have, on uh, more high-end meters, uh, you will have four jacks, and you will have to move the red lead over to the milliamp jack, because um, there will be a milliamp jack and an amp jack. The reason they are separate, or the reason, yeah, milliamps and amps are separate is because we have fuses in here, and the fuses are here for one particular reason. If you leave your leads in your multimeter in current, if we leave it in there, how a multimeter measures current? Multimeters can only measure voltage. That's all they do. That's all a uh, digital multimeter does, DMM. That's all it does. So in order to calculate, so in order to get a current, what we have to do, and this is how we usually measure current in most things anyway, is we use, um, we use what's called a current shunt resistor. It's basically a resistor that we know the resistance of. Usually the shunt is either usually the shunt resistor is either one ohm or one hundred milliohms because that's usually pretty easy to calculate. One ohm is great because this will calculate it using Ohm's law. V equals IR. So voltage equals current times resistance. So if we have one ohm, that means that every amp, uh, every amp across here, across our current shunt resistor will be one volt. So one volt equals one amp. So that's really easy to calculate for us. The multimeter probably uses 100 milliohms just because um, it doesn't have to have as big of a shunt, it doesn't have to have as long as a shunt resistor and we can put fa fairly quite a bit of current there. If we're trying to calculate it on our own, it's probably going to be easier just to use one ohm. But this probably uses 100 milliohms, like I said. Inside, we, we will have a what's called a current shunt resistor. I will take this apart in a second and I will show you after I'm done with the showcase here. So now that I'm in amp mode, I have to move it over here. And so the fuse is there so that if we leave it, we're going to be putting it through that current shunt. You measure current in series and voltage in parallel. So if you try to if you try to test voltage in the way that it is right now, it's going to put it's going to put the current right through that shunt resistor and chances are depending on whatever you're trying to plug into, you're just going to blow your, you, you, you're going to, it's going to draw a ton of current because there's not much resistance there um, for it to limit the current. So it's just going to draw a ton of current and then you could ruin your supply, mess up AC. Uh, if you're, if you're trying to probe something AC, it could literally blow up. Um, so that's why we have fuses in here to protect if we accidentally make that, if we accidentally make that mistake, everybody's done it. If we accidentally make that mistake, then that's there to protect us. Um, now, another function that most multimeters have is this hold function. So this will hold. This means that it's going to hold the data that's on the screen at the moment. So that means that it will just. Um, basically, that means that it's just going to keep the data. Um, on the screen so that you could write it down or something like that. And then and then it's still going to be changing on the probes. Um, and then I showed you the range function. Mine has this NCV. Some multimeters have it. This means non-contact voltage. And um, when you're working, it's it, it means that it will detect AC, um, live AC in certain places. I do not like these because chances are they're going to be lying to you. I was working on something over the summer, an electrical thing over the summer, and I was using my non-contact voltage sensor and I turned and I had things in that box that were live and I had things that were not live. And I was looking for the things that were not live. It was telling me that they were live. And so that's so that's that's actually pretty good. 
but in the case when we don't want that, if we don't want that, um, if we're looking for something that's alive, this could be telling you that it's live. And then you touch, well, this could be telling you that it's not live. And then you touch it and you get shocked and you can die because, yeah, so these, uh, no, you you need to check it with the meter. Uh, these are okay for some things, but check it with the meter um, before you touch it. Before you work on it, check it with the meter. That is all of the main functions. Mine has this battery testing. It's just something they threw in there. Um, it's not very useful. Um, some multimeters will have a transistor tester. Um, also, not terribly useful because you don't really need to measure that. Um, if you really need to measure that, you can use a different type of tester. You really don't need a multimeter for that. Um, you can use a component tester. Um, it, um, and if it, basically that's going to tell you HFE or the transistor gain. Um, so we don't need that value because we can get it in the data sheet. Um, if you're going to use a transistor, chances are you're probably going to have to look at the data sheet. Um, if you actually want to use it for a custom project, if you're just building a circuit you found on the internet, you're not going to pr probably pay attention to that anyway. But if you're trying to build a custom circuit, you're going to look at the transistor's data sheet so you can figure out all those values and it will give you HFE in the data sheet. Um, you really don't need to look at it with a multimeter. All right, let's take it apart. Okay, I have it apart and here's the inside. Um, it's fairly simple. So here's our two fuses. This is our 400 milliamp fuse. So this is on the milliamp side. And here's our um, 10 amp fuse. So that's on the amp side. Remember that this multimeter will probably will only measure up to 10 amps because it has a 10 amp fuse in it. <laughs> and chances are you will probably burn out the multimeter if you measure more than 10 amps and you short that fuse. So what are the other components? This, um, Dave Jones would probably call that a blob on board. Um, that is our chipset. Uh, we don't know what it is because it's covered. And we'll never know because if we try to take that off, then we will just screw up the chip. Here's our clock crystal. Um, that's probably an external clock for the chipset. Um, most of the chips that you're going to find in a multimeter, they're not going to be a microcontroller. They're going to be a... They're going to be a custom multimeter chipset. Um, companies like Fluke, Bryman, um, Xtech, all of them probably they they make their own chips. Particularly Fluke. Fluke will make its own chip. I know that Bryman will also make their own chip. Um, lower end multimeters, you will probably find just a generic chip. That's probably what this is. It's probably a generic chip. Um, this is the buzzer for the continuity function. Um, and let's see, what else? This is our current shunt resistor. You can see that that's really fat because it has to be able to take 10 amps for a pretty a pretty long time. I think 15 minutes is what this says, that it, it could take 10 amps for 15 minutes. These are the wires going to our display, um, probably for power. Um, the actual data wires are gonna be underneath here. Um, I haven't had it apart that far because uh, I don't want to break it. <laughs> um, but I have other multimeters that I could take apart if anybody's interested. Because um, they're already broken, so I don't mind breaking them further. <laughs> these are going to be um, mobs or metal oxide resistors, and these are input protection um, from over voltage. So once these go up to their their rated voltage, um, they will um, start to clamp that. Once they go over their rated voltage, then they will start to clamp the voltage and prevent it from rising. Uh, they're usually used in surge protection, actually, but here they're nice for making sure you don't blow up your multimeter. <laughs> um, so these, these resistors here and all of these SMD resistors here, this is going to be our resistor divider. This is going to be the main thing that will allow this chipset to read what's going on. So around here somewhere, probably this diode here, this diode, its function 
will be, uh, okay, I'll get to that in a second, actually. But what's going on here, we have all of these resistors. Once these resistors, oh, these resistors' job is to make sure that they drop the voltage. This, this chipset can probably handle 5 volts maximum on its input. So what that means is that all of these resistors will drop the voltage coming in, but it will know the value of these resistors so that it can still calculate what the voltage would actually be. So we have all of the, so all of the resistors are there just to make sure that we drop that voltage down. Um, and these big fat ones are probably in that link as well. But most of these, but these SMD ones are here. Um, I have another multimeter, maybe I'll take it apart another time, but I have another multimeter that's much more distinct where the resistor divider is to show you exactly how it goes into the chipset. Now this is an auto ranging multimeter. On a man manual ranging, it is, my old one is manual ranging, so that's why it's so distinct. It's a little bit different for an auto ranging multimeter because it has to be able to test the ranges itself on a so it has to be able to tell which resist. It has to be able to turn off some resistors and turn some on. So that's probably what these are for. Um, these little MOSFETs here. These are or transistors. There's some type of transistor, probably MOSFETs, but there's some kind of transistor that just turn off these particular resistors. Um, uh, that and then this diode here. Probably this diode, or there's two more of them right over here. Their job is once they've once they've taken that down on DC, it's no problem because the chipset reads DC voltage. AC, we have a problem because AC will fry this chip. It will not it will not be able to read an AC voltage. So what we do is that diode will rectify the the DC. So it will rectify the AC. So basically, it turns AC into DC. That's basic concept. If you don't know that, then there you go. A uh, diode will turn AC into DC. And once we have that DC, once we have that AC, uh, once we have that AC rectified, then it can read the AC voltage. There you go. And then the reason we have to select between AC and DC on the meter is so that it knows to turn that diode on or off. Um, there you go. Um, there is usually protection on most multimeter, there, on most higher end multimeters. There's going to be protection if you test you know, AC on DC, it's probably, it's going to be fine. Um, nothing's going to happen because it has protection there, but, you know, and sometimes they have the diode always engaged. It doesn't matter because the DC can flow through the diode and it's still DC, <laughs> but AC um, gets rectified into DC when that happens. So there you go. Although we won't read a DC voltage uh, when you test it. That's interesting. Yeah. But yeah. That's the basic concept, is it can only measure voltages. So we have the current shunt, and it will measure the voltage across the current shunt, and that's how it measures current. And then resistance is a little bit more complicated. Um, res resistance, the multimeter will send out a set voltage and read the current that comes back. And whatever the current is comes back, it can use Ohm's law and figure out what the current is, what the resistance is. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, it will usually measure this in microamps. That's because I don't. That's why I don't feel it when it goes across my chest. When it goes across my chest, I don't feel anything. Um, although it's also a low voltage, so there you go. Um, and I, I can't. I can't even feel thirty volts DC. So, yeah, the more you know. Some people have a higher tolerance than others in electricity. That's how it goes. Um, now there are an, there is another type of of um, uh, resistance. There's another type of resistance tester. It's called a mega ohm meter, and this means this these meters. This uses 1.5 volts, or so most most meters either use 1.5 or 3 volts to test resistance. Um, if you have a circuit that has a really high resistance, you're not going to be able to measure much with 1.5 or 3 volts. So a mega ohm meter will use 500, 1,000, 10,000 volts. To test the voltage, to test the resistance, and you can get a much more accurate reading in higher, higher resistances and lower resistances. So that's how, yeah, a mega ohmmeter is usually much more accurate to measure ohms because it's made to measure resistance. That's its job. Um, yeah, that's about it for this 
for the basic concept of the multimeter. It's really simple. Here, this is just the antenna for the uh, non-contact voltage um, because it's... Eh, I'll, I'll link a video down below to how the NCB tester works um, if you don't mind AVE's cryptic um, language. Um, I will also, um, if you're looking to buy a multimeter, like long term, um, I will also link a video by Dave Jones of the EE vlog that it's about an hour long, but it is definitely worth it if you're going to buy a multimeter, um, where he goes into detail of all the features you need and all the features you don't need, you know, what, how much to spend and how much all this other stuff. The basic rule though, the basic premise is spend about 50 bucks or more. Don't spend under that. Um, this is about a $50 meter, but I got it on sale. So there you go. Um, but it is about a $50 meter. Um, yeah, don't spend, don't spend over. Um, well, yeah, spend, spend 50 bucks or over. Um, try to get a reputable brand. This is not a reputable brand, but who cares? Um, I, it works for me and that's what I care. <laughs> um, uh, how many digit? how much, how much, uh, accuracy do you want? Um, the more digits you have, the more accurate you're going to get, but the more digits you have, the more expensive it gets. This is known as a three and a half digit multimeter, which is pretty standard in this price bracket. Uh, if you want more digits, um, one of the ones that I can name that probably, I think that one has four and a half is the Fluke 875. Uh, I would love a Fluke 875, but I don't want to spend $400 on a multimeter. <laughs> I didn't even spend $400 on my oscilloscope. I've spent 200 So... Yeah, not worth your money, in my opinion, a Flick 875. It's a great multimeter, fantastic multimeter, not worth the money. Um, so is most of Fluke's multimeters. I mean, probably the 116 is probably your best value. Um, yeah, it's like 115 bucks for a 116. Um, that's probably the best value you can get for a Fluke multimeter. They're just ridiculously expensive, and you can buy... Other multimeters that are just as good, like a Bryman. <laughs> so there you go. That's how the multimeter works.